oh, I'm not wearing glasses. What kind of an agent is this? It doesn't wear glasses. But right now I don't have. What happened? When we will use Zoom filters. So let me first use the filter. Let me first wear the glasses and then we will talk. What are we here for? Okay. I mean, this looks good. Yeah. I mean, somewhat swaggy, somewhat, somewhat, somewhat good, somewhat like an agent, of course. <laughs> we are here today. And yes, this is Agent Mithunjay. Now, you must be wondering what an agent wearing with glasses is doing. KubeCon, this cloud native America, Laos, Angeles, North America. Welcome to the conference. But before that, you must be wondering why. Why an agent? Why an agent is required? You will have to see this. Why? In this 30 minute, I hope that it covers in it is covered in 30 minutes. Uh, why we are required here, why you are required here, and why this is going to be a super fun session. This is not going to be, you know, like a tutorial. I'm not saying that it's a tutorial. I'm not saying that you will learn Go, what we are going to learn today in just these 30 minutes, but it's going to be an awesome introduction. And you require not a coder this time, you require an agent. Let's begin. That's all. So uh, before anything, let's share the screen and at least become a little formal. Till now, it has been quite, quite, quite informal. So uh, before I share the screen, let me just see if the screen looks good. Yeah, the screen looks good. Now I will share the screen. The agent always checks everything working fine or not. So yeah, the screen is shared. Now I'm going to present the agent begins to present. Oh my God. Such time. Now, what are we here for? Okay. Deciphering your way to the world of Golang. I mean, what a name of a talk. Such a difficult name, first of all. But okay, you're welcome. You're welcome today. Uh, in deciphering or deciphering, I guess I'm weak at pronunciations, but I think it's written, so somewhat it is just appearing away to the world of Golang. And today we are here at KubeCon Cloud Native Con North America 2021, happening in a blended mode. And thankfully, uh, we are moving towards the normal routine. And hopefully, in the next year, we will all be having in person content itself only. And uh, and thank you so much to everybody who has joined us today. And I know that this talk is going to be, you know, a little informal, a little story like a little play like because uh, I mean virtually engaging the audience is difficult but Agent McKinsey is here. He will do the honors. Let's begin. What are we here for? But before what are we here for? Let's see who I am. So hello I mean till now with my glasses you already know that I am Agent McKinsey. I'm also a final year computer science engineering student in India. And also, well, I have been interning at Hacker Bank for now about more than three months. And let's not talk about that. Let's talk, talk about the reason why we are here. Because, yeah, I mean, all this is fun. But what? What are we going to do? What is an agent going to do in this? You know, all, I mean, there are also big coders all out here, all open source community members, and an agent, a spy has come here. Uh, there must be something, some, some, some very important reason for that. So, a memo, lost treasure, a mystery of the second world war. Now, I think these few terms that you are seeing, you must be wondering that, yeah, you require an agent, a spy agent, or what kind of an agent, we don't know. But here we are, and we need to go now before somebody else catches the treasure. But what? What is the memo about? What is the lost treasure about? Let's see that the memo oh my god this looks some really 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 old memo and as they said a second world war type memo what is this written i mean second world war will end in few days okay yeah it has ended a long time back thankfully and peace will come peace has come thank you so much but i want to leave something for you what a treasure a treasure mm, treasure the road to this treasure is written in a code. I mean, a code 
do we have to write program? Do we write to have code or no, 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 no. They have given a code, okay. Decipher it below and it's all yours. My God. I mean, this is our code. We have to decipher this. We have to figure out what is this. But we have to figure it out because treasure is involved after all and we are going to hunt it down. But how? I mean, this looks scary. I mean, what is this code? Five seven six five six C six three six F F six D. I mean, uh, I will forget it. I'm sorry. I will forget it. I hope you are also not, you know, figuring out, trying to figure out. Like, how can you figure out this? This is this is scary. I mean, what can be this? How to even solve with this? How, how what what can be the approach for this? I mean. I wish I wish this was an in-person conference. I mean, this is an blended conference, but I wish this could have been in-person talk. I could have invited some of you to help me. But I mean, this looks difficult. This looks difficult. But we are ready. I am ready. Are you ready? Are you ready for the treasure hunt? Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. But before going. Let's do some homework, investigation, agents, love investigation. So now, what are we going to do? We are going to investigate. What? Of course, the code. Let's go back to the code. Let's go back to the code and try to figure out few things. If you look at this, if you look at this code, you know, in the older days, the typewriter used to write one as I. So this is not I, this is one. This is an important point to note. And if we look at this code, there is one, 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 one interesting observation. They are all hex code. You see, there is, if you see the range of alphabets or numerics used, they are between zero to F. What does this mean? This means, of course, that you are you know, trying to figure out things. If you are trying to figure out things, this is something, 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 something interesting happening. Hmm. Now what can we do? Hex code. If it is hex code, then what? What next? Investigation is on. The code, the code, the code is hex code. The next point that if we look at it, it is encrypted. This is an encrypted code, of course. Of course, it is encrypted. That is known. I know that. But if we look at this, can it be Zor description? Can it be Zor, Zor encryption? This is a very, very favorite problem of uh, almost all those involved in encryption description. And this is one of the most fundamental thing that we are taught there. Can it be that? Can it be that? Can it be that? Of course, we are getting closer. But now we have to play this gamble. We have to figure out and we have to think that Let's try to make something a bit off and let's try to think that it is going along the lines of encryption and that too using Zor. Now this, I know I'm scratching my head, I'm sorry for that, but uh, agents need to scratch head and there is a property of Zor. You know that property of Zor. I mean, we all need to know, we all need to learn this today. But there is one interesting property of Zor that what's encrypted with SOAR can be decrypted with SOAR. I don't know why it sounds like what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, but uh, let's come back to SOAR. Let's come back to Los Angeles. I wish I could have been there. But what's encrypted with SOAR can be decrypted with SOAR. This is good. 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 But what next? What next? There's still something that we need to know. Like we know you that it's encrypted. It's hex code. It's encrypted using Zor, and we have the property of Zor that you just need to do the same. And we are going to explain it later on, like how we are going to solve it. But this gives us a hint, very big hint. There is another interesting fact: our investigative and research team has found out this interesting fact that if you look at E T A O I N S H R D L U. I mean, I don't know how to pronounce that. 
we are going to use this now what is this this is another encryption problem no this is not an encryption problem this is not an encryption problem this is one of the most interesting facts uh, i mean i hope approximate facts that this is the approximate order of 12 most used letters in english language meaning ma making meaningful words so the frequency of letters appearing like e would be more than t and then t would be more than a o more than i and and so on and we have a data set team collected frequency for every 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 letter uh, how they play an important role in making meaningful words in english language so we have this frequency we have we know that it's a hex code we know that it's instead producing is all so what are we waiting for i mean we are getting close aren't we i mean it's going too quick but we have to team as well we have to be quick we have to, the agent has to solve this mystery quickly you will have to help us okay so i mean let's go for it of course we are in the 21st century now we are not going to solve it manually with pen paper we are going to build an application but how do we how are we going to build that application what language we are going to use let's go for it golang we are going to use golang i mean this talk is revolving around golang of course But we are not coming directly to Golang, also, because we are solving a mystery, right? Yeah, of course, we are solving a mystery. We need to go back and let's build something in Golang. So, what will happen now? Now, if you look at this page, this page has an encrypted code, and this encrypted code is nothing but the code that was written in that script in that memo. We have that. Now we need to go and code and fill the decrypted message here. We need to do that to find the treasure. Okay, where it is located, or where it is. And this looks so so complex. I mean, very painful to the eyes. And need we need to fix that part. But before we fix that, we need to figure it out first. Uh, I mean, one thing like how will the Zor property work, and how will be our approach to solve this problem before we move on to coding it. So. Follow me. Just follow the agent. So now, if you look at this photo, this photo is very, very you know, you know, it gives you a little bit idea. But how encryption happens? We are not going to talk about decryption here. We are going to use the reverse logic here. We are going to first encrypt something, something that is written in alphabets into characters. Now here is there is an encryption key, and this is sixty nine. Okay. And I mean, let it be this encryption key. I mean, you know, there's another interesting fact that this is a byte. Okay, so all this encryption key is also a byte. So a byte can have how many possibilities? Two fifty six. We are going to use that also as an fact. Okay. So uh, that is another investigative analysis happening right now. Okay, so this means that the range of values can be at the max two fifty six. So at the max two fifty six encryption keys can happen, right? Right. So for now we assume that the encryption key sixty nine. Although in our code it would be figured out on our own, and we'll discuss it later how. But we see that A is ninety seven. Okay, small A has its you know in the form of byte is ninety seven. And when we zor it with sixty nine, it becomes thirty six, and thirty six is a dollar. So now A has become dollar. Similarly, B has become. Uh, this is single quote, and this is ampersand, and this is exclamation mark. So if we look at that code, it is very much possible that this is not directly alphabet, but they are in fact you know they are bytes only when they when these hex code. This is hex code, of course, but when these hex code will be converted into bytes, we will have them in this form. No, we will have them in this form, and then we will try to zor them. Where, how how will we zor them? How will we be finding that encryption key? We will find that with the help of the C T A O I and S R C D L U. Okay, we are going to use this fact, this fact, and this mapping will help us get the encryption key, and we are going to use that in the form of a score. Let's go back. Let's go back. Let's go back. We are getting close. So this is single byte storage. This is how encryption is happening. That said, that done, we know that this was 
a little bit of reverse to what we wanted. This was encryption, but we want decryption. But now let's come how to solve this. So loop through all possible modes, okay? If we loop, but like we can use brute force here. We don't have, you know, a long set of values. So we can use this, you know, smart, uh, I mean, this is something cheeky, but of course we are going to use, we are going to leap or loop through all possible bytes and we are going to sort the byte against each byte of our encrypted code. Why? Because that is what being done here. This, and that was what the property of sort. It will be like, Encrypted message will be here and it will be zored with something, and then we will be getting original message. The message that was being tried to figure out. When we see in the form of code, we might be seeing it better, but we will be looping through the all, all the possible bytes. We'll be zoring the byte against each byte of our encrypted code. And we need a score because we don't have you know, directly the encryption key. We are going to assign spring a score based on the mapping. Mapping of what? mapping of the frequency table. We are going to see that frequency table in that code. And what is that frequency all about? That frequency is all about how letters come up in English alphabet. And this, the string that will be returned with the highest score will be a decrypted message. How is it sounding? Sounding fun, sounding fun, sounding fun, sounding fun. Let's go code. Let's learn go land now. Enough of slides, enough of all this now, I think we should code. So, okay, before we switch the screen, let's switch the screen. And yeah, of course. So what are we going to do now? Yes, now we are going to study the code. We are going to see how this has been implemented in the form of Go code. We'll try to understand at least a little bit of Golang, if not everything, because it's not possible to be honest. In just 30 minutes, we can have everything. So let's go to code. Let's learn how we are solving this interesting problem and how we're getting the output, okay? So let me share the screen and let's go, let's go. Okay, so here we are. Now, if you see, this is the main program that we have written and the file name is main.go because this is a Golang code. And now we need to study how this code works, how, how it is going to implement whatever we have discussed till now. So, uh, I mean, let's start from the beginning itself. Now, first thing that you see is a package main. So package is basically, you know, a way to group functions and Golang has this, uh, you know, important utility. It's one of the founding, you know, stones of Golang that like package can be called because it, 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 it is, it is made up of all the files in the same directories and it helps in, you know, grouping functions. So its features and its implementations will become more and more important when we dig deeper in Golang from the resources that we are going to discuss about. So now we can see that this package main is important because whenever we are going to execute a main, uh, whenever we, whenever the main function, uh, every time the main package is executed, this function will be, you know, it will be called. And from here, whatever is being called, you know, it will be working for our uh, purpose, our goal. So like if we see like uh, this function, main function, it will be the first thing to be called. And from main, it will be calling single or dash shipper, which is written here, which we'll be discussing. From single or decipher, we can see that the code hex is being called and get car weight is being called. What are these? We'll be discussing shortly. But as you can see, these are the functions that have already been written and how the parameters are being passed. We are now going to discuss how they are Golang specific. So now if you see line number nine, this is function decode hex. So as we mentioned, we need to decode the hex code. We have the code in the form of hexadecimal. So hex have to be converted into the form of bytes array. So how is this function being written in Golang? Let us check it out. So function decode hex, hex bytes, byte, byte, come on, oh my God, what is this? So actually, if you see, this is just the function name, decode hex, okay? And this is the value that you are going to pass, uh, the variable, okay? So here the variable is of type, is a, there's a slice or array of bytes basically. Okay, so we need a byte array. So uh, we are also passing a byte array as hex code. Okay, so this is the hex bytes and what we are going to get, we are also, we are going to get the array in the form of bytes, but they will be converted into bytes. Right now they is they are hex bytes. They are not hexadecimal, like you're not passing hexadecimal directly here. You have converted the hexadecimal to, you know, bytes. Hmm. Hmm. And that will be decoded into the form of bytes which will be uh, which we will be getting where we will be getting in this variable 
called wet ret return so this will be having the decoded bytes there okay so here we are dynamically allocating using make a uh, memory to return to ret and it, it will its memory will be equated equal to the length of x bytes which is also being decoded the length is also being decoded as you can see hex dot decoded length length hex bytes so this is something uh, you know this is just dynamic allocation of byte array that is happening here and now in the next code we can see that here an underscore is being written underscore is returned in go lang when we don't want to use when something is being returned but it's not going to be used so we return an underscore that gives us an option you know to just you know if something is being returned and we don't want to use like it's going to return you know int an error so uh, decodes sir into uh, length of bytes returning the actual number of bytes written to destination and it also i mean returns the error but if we look at this thing ret ret since it is dynamically allocated already and whenever we decode it it's already getting you know passed inside ret so it is happening internally we don't need anything else so we are going to return ret after this so uh, what will ret contain ret will contain the bytes array this this hex code that we got in the form of bytes array was decoded okay it was decoded and it was decoded and it has been stored in ret and it will be later on called but it's not being called here of course it's being called in single sort decipher but before we come to that let's check it out what what we need to do next we also need a mechanism to calculate the scores because we know that we have to find the highest score and the highest score string and the high and the bytes that we will get with the highest score will actually when converted to string will be the answer that we need okay so that is the answer that we need that is the treasure hunt we will be needing so if you look at this okay so now if you look at this this is just getting you know this is what we talked about et i in shadow you so my investigative team has you know covered all these data and if we see what is this this from what is happening in line number 21 to a line number 40 it's nothing but actually mapping of all the alphabets uh, as keys to their values and what is these values these values are frequency frequency of their order of appearance frequency of their appearance approx frequency of alphabets in making meaningful english let words so if we see like e should have the maximum and it is having the maximum and then t is having nine similarly it's all following this order so this this data is something that is available on the internet we can get it from there and i have also used the same and it is what 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 is it returning it is returning uh the you know it's uh, returning the weight of the score according to the corresponding key so whatever key key is also a form of byte we discussed encryption key is nothing but a byte itself so here we are getting the key can the form of care byte so whatever you know e uh, is we have we will return the float value to that okay so this is returning basically the value value of the alphabet that is coming from here the key the key will be passed from this code single jot decipher okay so this is getting a key here in the form of care byte and character and this is all the type byte okay and it is going to return of uh, uh, it is going to return the frequency which is of type float 64 okay so because it is a float variable it is it has the same basis so it is going to return of type float so this is basically a hash map this this is nothing but a map map of keys and values here the key is a b c d and we have converted it into form of byte okay so that they are mapped easily now we have a mechanism to also calculate our our scores okay and we have also the decoded byte array strings we have two things now we need to just execute our algorithm okay and we are going to execute here in this function what we are we going to do here we are just going to you know we are just passing the encoded message in the form of array of bytes and what we will be returning will be returning the answer in the form of bytes the answer the decrypted code and this is this the maximum score which we are returning but we won't be using for now because that's not what we want 
and this was just for debugging in case we had a problem but we didn't have and this is an error if by any chance error happens okay so what is happening in line number 53 line number 53 is just calling the function that we made here decode hex now what is happening here this is getting the encoded message and it is decoding it in the form of byte array now we have the byte array now what are we going to do we are going to store the each element in this bytes array with the 256 types of, all the possible bytes we have are 256 only so we are going to store them and store them in again an array of bytes okay so this c is nothing uh you know uh it's no, not c actually it's just being zored here it's getting zored and then we are getting you know this r this r is actually the array of bytes where we will be storing you know uh, the uh, converted uh, i mean the zored code okay so whenever we are going to zor using the zor property we are going to byte it again uh, we are going to zor it against its own bytes for all the possible values so all the possible values for all the possible values we do that and after doing that what are we going to do that we are going to you know use this c whatever will like we remember no when we were discussing that we were zoring it and we were getting a new form of character after zoring because that will be a new byte so new byte will be a new character and that character will be will there is a chance that it might be the answer so how to ensure that that chance is the highest by calculating the score so how will we be calculating the score we are we will be giving the get string the score by using this function get car weight and where we created this here okay and how this is happening like this is happening through a simple logic we have declared a variable called variable s that will be having the sum it is of the type float 64 okay so it is of the type float 64 and what it is doing it is getting the sum uh, of uh, each like it's going to pass through the entire bytes so it has to calculate the entire byte array sum no it's just like you know some, consider it uh, when you if you have ever uh, like if you have uh, uh, programmed uh, or or declared an array and calculated the sum of all the elements in the array so we are basically doing that only just an additional step is that we are mapping it with here so we are mapping uh, the characters and passing them here and then we are adding the sum after that what is happening is we are storing that you know this character in the corresponding r resultant array of bytes now what we'll be doing after this all this happens we are trying to calculate the highest score because the highest scores will only be the corresponding string because that will have the highest probability to be the english word that we wanted so how to do that that is also something similar that we you we might have done in other languages that we have done uh it's just like calculating the maximum you know uh uh element of the array huh? it's just like that so we just want to calculate the maximum highest score there so now we we are getting the scores here absolutely that's right but we have also variable score defined here in 958 again of 464 type now we are just finding the maximum of it okay so if if s is greater than score then what will happen you keep on It means that is better. So you keep on storing it in the answer till you get the maximum score. Until as soon as you get the maximum score, it's done. So where? So this. And now if you see that line number seventy-three, it is getting the entire array. This is this is this was an array, and we are just declare. We are just assigning it directly, you know, to R because we need, you know, because we need the entire array. So this is something that we can do here, and we need and we have done after doing this. what are we going to return we are going to return this answer the score and the error okay and uh, in this case uh, okay and after this what will happen is like if we see this function main function in this main function we are calling this single zor decipher code that we have implemented so now if we go to this code things will become little more clear i will try to repeat now what is being done this is the treasure code that we had this is being passed in single zor decipher function okay and what are we going to get we are going to get the answer the answer is in the form of byte array so we are just 
converting it into form of string here when we are trying to use FMT. Now FMT was declared here, as you can see. So what is its purpose? It, its purpose is basically to print it, to format it in the console. So we are going to use that FMT.printer there and decrypted code is in the form of string answer. So overall, this is the code that we wanted to implement. Now, if we go and check it out, like how it has been done. So if we see again, singles or decipher function, it, it calls this. And uh, single order decipher calls decode hex. It decodes the hex coded byte message. After decoding, it maps with the weight map that we have created and keeps on adding the sum and find and on finding the maximum sum, we map it with the corresponding uh, bytes. And then that byte will be the answer, those, 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 that array of bytes, which we convert into the form of string. So enough of all this. Now it's time to run this program. Okay. Now let's just see that what does it does. Okay. So let's run using go run main dot go. Wow. So the answer is decrypted code is welcome to KubeCon plus Cloud Native North America 2021. Oh my God. So that that was a treasure. That was our treasure. And now let's go back to our slides and see how far we have reached. So, 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 let's go back to our slides. Here we are. So on building in Golang, we found out that the encrypted code had nothing else but the treasure that we are severing today, the present that we have today. Welcome to KubeCon plus Cloud Natives Conference North America 2021. The link to implemented code is in these slides, but now I know that this is not just enough. This is just the beginning. In fact, we have just covered a very you know interesting point of view of GoLang. I would not say that this tutorial or this workshop or this talk will tell you everything about GoLang. This was not intended actually. This was just to give you a plethora of you know resources as well as the first interest on how to move ahead with it. So the agent Mitunjay has done his job. He will remove his glasses. Uh, or maybe later only. First, let's figure out what else is left. So, uh, installing GoLang is something that I have already uh, mentioned here. These resources, please go and check out according to your operating system. You can install it. And why we use GoLang? I mean, one of the biggest advantages of GoLang is that it's built for concurrency, and it's easier to learn. It's learn to learn, and has been adopted by many and used by many cloud native technologies like Kubernetes, and they use it because. because because it is built for conferencing. So, and many other features that we have, like, like the, you know, the kind of the package dependencies handling it that we do with GoMod. When we will go in detail, we will discuss this later. There are other bunch of resources that I have shared with you all to learn GoLang because learning GoLang will be requiring, you know, a little bit of time. It will take time, but don't worry. You all will learn, you all will enjoy about it. And uh, with this, I would like to end my talk and this talk that we had. And I hope that you enjoyed this journey with Agent Mithunjay to discover the treasure. The treasure is today, this conference. Thank you so much for coming out. If you want to reach out to me, reach out to me on Twitter at Mithunjay394. If you want to reach on me Slack, on Community Slack, my name is just Adam Mithunjay. Uh, you can reach out to me there. Don't just end here. We are here to have you. We are here to help you out. And if you have any questions, let's discuss, let's try to solve them. Let's try to help you out. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you so much, everybody.